My name is Tim Trelaw, and you're watching Dr. Freedom. Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Omega Files. I'm your host, Dr. Freedom. And tonight we've gathered to sit down and talk about another, new, well, new range from Big Finish, a box set that came out not too long ago. And that is the Third Doctor Adventures with Tim Trelor standing in to portray the role of the Third Doctor. Okay, let's get everybody's. So, hey, hi there, hi there, ho there. Let's start with Graham. How we doing, folks? Time to chow down with the town off. Oh, yeah. All right, AJ. Hiya, hiya. Hey, William. Hey, now. Nah. Anybody ready for a game of cricket? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ryan. Hello, everyone. And Texas Tim. Hello there. Okay, yeah, this one is, yeah, rather, it came with two stories. So that's why when I asked to do your opening thoughts tonight, you know, just give me a quick, you know, opening thoughts. You know, if you want to go into both of them or overall, that's up to you. Um, we were dealing with two stories here, Prisoners of the Lake and, of course, The Havoc of Empires. And there were just uh, – what I want to say right off the top of the bat, you know, even though we do know it's somebody else who's standing in, you know, to fill in for, you know, John Pertwee, it, every now and then, you know, he was hitting it so well that I actually had to do a double take because there's just some parts – you know, there's parts where he didn't, but there's also these parts where he really, really captured, you know, Pertwee's character, the way he put into the character, you know, so very well. It was like, wow. You know, it knocked me over. Okay, let's go ahead and get your guys' thoughts on it. Let's start with Texas, Tim. I like it very much. Uh, this is my third time listening to it this week, and um, it's great. You get, like, a little story that would have fit right in the Series 8 the unit story um, with, the, with you know, the unit involved a little bit in the background, and you got a, a sympathetic scientist with them and doing this kind of cool underwater stuff. And then, and then you get, like, a, a story that would fit right in Series 10, when, um, you know, he's got his freedom back to travel in time and space. So they go on a little space adventure with, uh, you know, uh, Joe and Mike, who are apparently on a date. And, um, yeah, it's, I, I was telling these guys last night, it's, it's interesting that, you know, when we first heard this set a few months ago, that your brain is automatically looking for flaws in his performance because you're, you're trying to think, okay, this guy's supposed to think, this, this guy's supposed to sound just like John Pertwee. And... He does for the most part. And I remember when we reviewed this before, we kind of nitpicked and said, eh, sometimes he falls off. But you know what? Listening to it this week, I just completely forgot about it. And I thought I was just listening to the third doctor. And that's, the, in other words, he does give a very good performance in the, in the part. And so I enjoyed it very much. Okay. Up next, Ryan. Go ahead. Um, I really uh, am a big fan of the third doctor. And, um, I like the way uh, that Tim Trelaw voiced the role here. Uh, I, I feel that sometimes uh, it doesn't matter if you can sound spot on to the person, as long as you capture those mannerisms. And that's definitely what he accomplished here. Uh, the tone of these stories, um, they definitely didn't feel too modern. They did feel of the time and, uh, I could see that being a TV story back in the day had they had the budget for that. But, um, yeah, uh, just a terrific uh, set of stories. Okay, AJ. Uh, yeah, I listened to these stories. I didn't even think it was a different guy. To me, it just sounded uh, like John Pertwee. The one nitpick I have, though, is they kept using the modern sonic screwdriver sound, not the classic one. That's the one problem I had with that. Um, but overall, everyone did a good job, especially Joe trying to sound younger than what she really was, you know, like she was back in the 70s. So that was a really good job there. Okay, William. Oh, yeah, I liked this, this story very much. Um, you do, he does sound like the third doctor, and, and that, that's not what is in my head. I listen to it, and I hear Pertwee doing what he did back in TV, uh, um, doing two different separate adventures. The only... You can say a nitpick I have of it is is that Tim Trilo is also narrating the first story. So when he does that, I'm conf I, I, I got a little confused, thinking it's still the doctor talking when is he is he's narrating a scene. So and, and so if you're gonna do that, have another voice do the narration for 
But because they told me, I had to listen to it twice to realize he's not doing that scene. He's explaining what's going on. But since he's it's Trim Trilo, I thought it was the doctor doing the scene like that. So I, I got a little, nit, little confused about it. But, you know, that's a little nitpick about it. It is a great story, you know, like 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 Tim said, you know, one one with the unit and one in when he's in space like that. So hopefully when uh, when uh, they do another one, uh, we could see, we could see him uh, more into space like that. Um, um, too bad, unfortunately, we don't have Liz Sladen to you know for for Sarah Jane. Just a lot of the space stuff when he left Earth was doing her run. So you know, so you know, we could either he could do it by himself or continue with Joe Grant. Okay, and Graham. Uh, just before I lay my thoughts about it, Brian, I'm going to make Will very happy here. Apparently, Nick Briggs has already come out and said, Will, that in the second volume of the box set, the narration is going to be dropped. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Uh, you know, anybody who's not a fan of narration, start blowing your bugles and waving your flags. But anyway, uh, yeah, getting back to this. Um, Tim Trior, bang up job. Great, great performance, you know, I mean, like Tim already did, you, you know, if, you, if you're a newbie at these audios, you'll sit back and you'll try, you'll try and nitpick. Scratch it, forget it. Just take the performance for what it is. It's a great impersonation. He's not meant to be bang on. He's impersonating the role. With regards to both the stories, fantastic. Great pair 2 f stories for the time period. Um, you know, you have the, the traditional alien race stuck on Earth and has to be you know, dealt with in a, a manner, you know, unbeknownst to the public for with Prisoner of the Lake. And you've also got the political game with the uh, the Havoc of Empire. So not bad. And there's some really great great performances for the the guest cast throughout, which I dare say we're gonna get in there later. But yeah, really enjoyed the box set. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, the first thought that hit me after I, I listened to Prisoners of the Lake and this just shot into my head. All you guys who are interstellar, you know, prisoner transporters need to unionize and get some safety shit put in. Mm -hmm. Look at how many times we've had prison ships go down everywhere in the Doctor Who universe. <coughs> the Terra Leptals and whatnot. It's like, you know, they're always breaking down and crashing. It's like it's like that saying at the end of Spaceballs, eh, you know, damn it, even in the future nothing works. <laughs> Mm. Oh, okay, the, the thing I do want to open with, though, is I'm going to leave the floor open. Um, the music in Prisoners of the Lake really took me back to that era. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was, I was sitting there thinking, wow, this sounds so much like one of the uh, episodes of Pertwee, that distinct, you know, like music, that's yeah. synthesizer and all that. Mm -hmm. I agree. It, it, yeah. I noticed that yesterday I was listening to it again, and it's like, it's very much like um, uh, the, mind, the Mind of Evil uh, sound. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. It's... Um, a little bit, you know, it's, it's, it's got that whole early 70s Pertwee sound to it of his incidental music, which which kind of morphed into something else later with later Doctors, but uh, yeah. very good music, especially the first story. I, I don't remember it that much in the second one. Hmm. I got I to gotta give props to the, um, um, so the one that takes place in outer space. Hmm. Um, it, it, it made um, Joe more of the focal point for that story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though, even though um, she gets upset that uh, what what might consider a date is uh, a scene of sports no. game, or like yeah, cricket game, yeah, yeah. cricket game. You know, that's 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 the that's between them. But it was good mm -hmm. to see that she's the focal point of the story. Well, I mean, it, yeah, why not? But then again, where all those people would be like, oh my God, it's Joe Who. Hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, they were. I don't think those. Who say that weren't around to see the? Per no, 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 no. But you tried putting that on TV, and then you didn't let it back in. Oh my! Uh, yeah, you know. I, I get the idea, and I, I'm really surprised the extras didn't shed any light on this. I get the idea that this was originally uh, written as a um, early adventure for the mm -hmm. third Doctor, and that I think it was. Yeah, I think it was. Why, which is why you have the narration included, and I think that was before they made the decision to recast. They didn't mention this in the extras at all, and I was hoping they would. They would, but uh, it. It seems to me that the because also the doctor's absent for a couple of parts in each story. Like for example, he's tied to a chair in the second yeah. for a whole episode. Yeah, really, and there was a part three, was it? You're like, what the hell? Where is it? You know? Yeah. Yeah, like you said, it's all about Joe in that story, and it's uh, it's it's good. It's it's very good. But uh, I wonder if the, the 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 way they write the next box will be a little bit different because I'm guessing when they 
if they planned it as an early adventure, then they were going to, they weren't going to have somebody reading his part. It was going to be narration and you might have Katie Manning doing his part like she did in the mega or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people didn't really like that. I don't know. But, uh, <clears throat> hmm. Yeah. It did, it did seem to have the companion chronicle feel to it. You know, mm-hmm. where you have like somebody reading the narration and telling the story and guiding it along. And um, well, that's the feel I got out of it with him doing the narration. But it did get a little weird every now and then because, you know, he's he's doing the narration, I guess, in his own voice. And then, of course, he's jumping into character. So I, I did have a little trouble with myself because, you know, I'm bouncing back and forth between that. But other than that, I really enjoyed both stories. I really yeah. did. Um, Havoc of Empires was a good little space adventure. And, you know, we, you, know you had eels. You had the... Oh. Um, Oh, <laughs> Helen, Helen Goldwyn is a batshit crazy eel lady. Fantastic, yeah. man. <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. That was, she, she was brilliant the whole time. Yeah. because she, She's like the most nervous wedding planner from hell or whatever. Oh, Just, Jesus, my yeah. God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and it's funny that, that all this is going on for a wedding. The yeah. mystery and then a Joe being a security uh, um, consultant and all that is mm-hmm. before a wedding takes place. Well, that, that, I've got to say, though, with regards to the safety inspector being knocked out with a cricket ball, really? Three episodes? How hard was the cricket ball, man? Jesus. Yeah, stick him in a cupboard. He'll, he'll be there all right. You know. I think he might have been in the liquor cabinet before he got knocked out. Oh, well, there you go, yeah. <laughs> I also hope that next time, I mean, and I have nothing against Richard Franklin because I think he's good on audio, but it just seemed like Mike Yates was tagged into the both stories as a major player because he's one of the only survivors they have left from the, the era. That they, really all they have is Katie Manning. Well, you I mean, know what? I'd agree with that to an extent, Tim, maybe on the second story. I thought he'd a bit meant to do in the first because he was, he was like the, 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 the interlude between, obviously, true, the, true. the head of the, you know. Yeah, the yeah. in the first story, he was um, investigating um, stolen he was yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. Chicken stolen I'd, I'd, I'd agree with you with the second one. First one, I'll, I'll give a pass on that. But yeah. I mean, I, and I know I think the only reason, like I was saying, is is because that's all they have is him and her for, from the whole well, yeah. era. Unless John Levine wants to stop accusing people of having dirty mics, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so I'm, hope, I'm hoping next next box that they, you know, they have a couple of series ten adventures with the Doctor and Joe doing whatever, you know, um, mm. before, before Frontier in Space or something, you know, like a couple of adventures in space. Or, yeah. you know what? I mean, they can do the, the – you know, when the, the trouble is difficult because all you have is Yates again. You'd, have yeah. to, uh, you'd probably have to have narration again. Like, like they used that in the first order of paper over the fact that Nicholas Courtney isn't around. Yeah. Like it's here. So it's just – what can you do? I, know. Listen, I, don't, I don't mind the narration, but another voice – Needs to do the narration. That's yeah. Although, well, well, like I say, apparently they're going to drop the narration, so you're good there. You know. Yeah, I really wish you know things could get you know. I don't. I don't know about the whole thing that happened with John Levine. I really wish they could get him in on this because it'd be nice to have you know, you know both Sergeant Benton and you know Mike Gates and you know Joe Grant back with the Doctor on an adventure. I, I'd really enjoy that. That would actually work if they wanted to do a series, uh, a, a like story with you did. Because you could have the brigadier off screen all the time. They could just be, you know, mentioning what they were told to do. If they yeah. Had a pair of them. That that might actually work. He did say on a couple of videos at conventions that he would be eager to come back. I mean, apparently he's buried whatever hatchet he had with them. So it's a question if they invite him back or not. So. Hmm. Well, we don't know the, the release day of the next third doctor box is. So we don't know when, if he's in it or not. Hmm. Hmm. You never know. He might. I mean, this was, I think this was sort of a trial thing. And, and I think they, they, they did a brave thing by recasting a, a doctor. I mean, we knew they were going to do it with um, Ben's character from the second doctor. And you know, they've got, they've done it also with Barbara at this point, uh, yeah, Barbara. but to, to, to re, you know, a lot of people might've been against that, I would think, but I think uh, it works. It works very yeah. well. You know what? You can be against it all you want, but I'm sorry if you want more stories for that era, you're going to have to recast. Uh, I was thinking, yeah. that, look, why didn't they recast someone to be the brief? Because it, it was, seemed so weird. He was quiet all the time, like in the TV series, he's always loud and boisterous. I think it's a question of respect. I mean, because to be fair, I don't want him to recast the Brigadier. Um, I think this works, and this gives you the the, um, the the tools to make more stories. I mean, and and you can still be rather limited with your toolbox, but I mean, you don't want to recast everybody because then you know, no. then it would just be kind of. Yeah, but then let me. Yeah, they, 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 but if they do that, they might end up 
the recasting for, of course, um, Sarah Jane and uh, the third Doctor. The first, yeah, I wouldn't want to see uh, that. I think that would be the ultimate no no if he, if he attempted that. Sarah Jane or Liz. No, I don't. I wouldn't want to see them recast. Well, both of them. Each well, each of the actresses had daughters. Maybe their daughters could son, does sound a little bit like their mom. So. Although, plus we have seen you know the role of the Doctor recast before in the Five Doctors, but like mm. recast. Companion, you know, they've never really done that before. Well, remember the, the first doctor being recast was for the that, spe- that was a special story, mm. and that actor and that actor did a little did look like um, William Hartnell, but in this case, you're only casting for a voice. Well, if, that voice if that voice can sound, I mean, I, I know I, I miss Liz Slade and and of course um, this one, but um, if you could get either their daughters or somebody else that sound like them. I will. I don't mind a story or two with them back. Well, I think they've proven that there's ways to tell stories without using people that aren't there. I mean, they they did that with the Lost Story range for the first Doctor. You basically had a lot of narration from Carol Ann Ford and William Russell. They they do it with the uh, the uh, early early adventures with the second Doctor with Fraser Hines doubling as the Doctor, and it works because he's very good at it. Um, so I mean, I, I I would I would suggest rather than recasting everybody that's dead. You know, to continue the way they're doing it, you know, use the format they need to to tell the story, whichever works best. Like the narration in this didn't bother me at all because I'm kind of used to it by now. And if you've listened to the Companion Chronicles, it's the same thing. You've got one actor playing all the parts for for the most part. You've got a guest down there, but he, they often mm. do little. So it's yeah, they still manage to tell a whole lot of first, second, and third Doctor stories when when you know the actors aren't around, and that's great. Remember the thing is, a big finish is also doing um, um, missing adventures and uh, the seventh Doctor new adventures in audio form. So like, if you if you want an audio version of Scales of Injustice, like that, then somebody else needs to play the you know Liz um, Liz Shaw spot. Probably want to do that one uh, unless unless you go write a work around have your yes, narrator. Her scenes from that story. Well, that, I, I don't know if they would do that at Big Finish. A lot of those are uh, done as audio books for BBC books. So um. no, Big Finish does the the missing adventures and the new adventures of the Seventh Doctor. Those are the ones Big Finish does. Yeah, but so far they've only done ones where they have the cast members uh, alive. Yeah, most, yeah, most of them. Most of that is the uh, Seventh Doctor. Seventh, and you've had those three with the fourth Doctor. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who wants to pick it up next? Uh, Go ahead, AJ. Yeah, uh, the um, mention of the Delphons and how they communicate with their eyebrow mm-hmm. in the TV series. See, I just saw John in my mind watching him wiggle his eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, that was but, brilliant. They picked up on something from you know one episode that he just mentions as a joke, you know, and, and they, they, make it, they make it part of the plot. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah all the way back in Spearhead, yeah. Although, yeah. was, it, was it funny that the, the, the Delphons kind of sounded like, what, really rough do- Almas- uh, Alsatian dogs? Did you expect them to sound like that, even though they communicated with their eyebrows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know, keep Capaldi away from that planet. There's going to be war if he goes over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'll be rough, yeah. Uh, you mean you know, those, those alien dogs that were sleeping in the ship? Yeah, oh, the, uh, no, I thought it was Dastron. Oh, the Dastron, yeah, sorry, I'm getting messed up. I've been drinking no. again. My apologies. Yeah. <laughs> Dastron, yeah. I'd like to see another story with them in it. Yeah. I've been and then, of course, you had the, 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 the Persecure. And a, a good friend of ours, when we uh, last reviewed this, obviously, had a. Oh, a the Persecutor? Mo- yeah, yeah, yeah. Had a wee morning session that it sounded too much like the, the, the Dune. But, oh, well, what can you do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It would have been interesting if they would have used the Jejun for that part. Well, I don't know if it's technically said law enforcement. I don't, know, I don't know why they didn't, but anyway, yeah. Well, it, it wouldn't have fit the plot because they had been under the water all that time. Yeah. Uh, frozen, yeah. so. I mean, it could have been a suspended animation and woke up because the people went down there. Hmm. Could be, yeah. Could have been, yeah. Hey, they do that. Hey, Captain America slept for 75 years. What the hell? And in that story, again, you have Carolyn Seymour, who we've talked a lot about. Yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. man. She's been in a lot of these big finishes lately, and she's yeah. always good. Yeah. 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 Uh, Caroline Seymour was good. Oh, crap. And then you had the fella that played two or three parts. They played the 
the Sadie uh, coordinator who was nicking all the artifacts and he played the, the Scottish bloke with the dodgy suit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was the same guy. Yeah. I didn't even yeah, know that. Yeah, yeah, it was the same guy. Yeah. Wow. You know. I find it funny though, you put someone on trial while you're executing and that's just silly. How can you oh, that was, um, no, no, that's what, that's what really pissed me off about the Havoc of Empires. What were they two liaisons to the main two? For the you know the embassy and and the, and the Chalwaf the Chalnoff's uh, Chalnoff. Chalnoff's uh, wedding you know the two that were supposed to be married their two advisors really pissed me off especially the female you got, oh, yeah bro oh, man <laughs> I forgot uh, and it's it's a corny old trope isn't it but the yeah. idea that the, that the the betrothed people that don't even know each other they end up having to spend a few hours together locked in a um, a show yeah a shuttle. Yeah. And that's when they finally learn to, you know, like each other, which is cool. Mm. I mean, that's a cool way to end the story because then it's, you know, yeah. you, the whole time you think that's never going to work, you know. Yeah. And they get stuck with each other and they have to, they have to learn how to appreciate each other's opinion, you know. I need to give praise to Helena Goldwyn again, though, as well, because she also played the AI. Yes. And uh, Havoc of Empires, you know, and you had the whole conversation with Joe and you're like, wow, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm not telling you what I think. They'll, 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 they'll shut me down. They'll switch me off. You know, it's best. It's best to keep my mouth shut. Yeah. Okay. That was brilliant. Yeah. That was that was awesome. <laughs> it was unexpected too, because you kind of go like, Ooh, "Wow." Yeah. <laughs> A tender moment between an an, an imposter and her AI. Yes. <laughs> I think it's love. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that the character? That wasn't that character played by um Lucy Briggs. No, she was the the chick that was getting married. Hmm. Oh, Joanna Baker. Yeah, yeah. And I wish it was the uh, Tina. Tina. What? Yeah, Tina. Yeah. Is that a mistake? Yeah. Waited to be rejoiced with no more, Mister John Hart. Anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh wow! Wow. Yeah. Same chick. Yeah. Wow. I don't keep her busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's cool that they keep a, a stable of actors. They use them quite frequently. And half the time you don't know because they're putting on a fake accent or something. Mm -hmm. so that's that's good. <clears throat> yep. Uh, anybody uh, else? I was going to say, the other thing I liked when uh, they, they kept the 20-plus minute format of the original series. So it felt like you were listening to the, the TV show without watching the pictures. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. But there, there was four parts at 20 plus minutes. Yeah, 22, 23 minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was good. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Yeah. It, it's good that they didn't try to go too, too, too classic and do a six parter because that would have just kind of dragged probably. Mm. <laughs> Not having for bed a seven parter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or a 14 parter, like the, the, the doctor on trial. Mm. Yeah, what was what was that bomb they were using uh, to determine when to uh, yeah, execute them? Entropy clock. Entropy clock. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, yeah. Oh man, I. The entropy clock. I think they used that on um, oh, what was it called? Futurama, where the clock would randomly just choose numbers mm -hmm. and go back and forth until it hit zero. Yeah. <laughs> And also, another scary trivia fact that the Chalnoth name has been used before. Star Trek? Star Trek Next Generation, if I remember correctly. Mm. There's a crossover there. Yeah. No, don't, don't even go with that, man. No, they, did that uh, they, they did something like that in comics, so that's good enough. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, so good music, good storytelling. Yeah. You know, plus we had names dropped left and right also in Havoc Empires. You know, they mentioned the Santarans, the Rutans, the Draconians, just to name a few. And that's why I really loved also. It also helped put you back into that era just a little bit more. Oh, man. It was just, you know, it was just cool, this set. I, I can't think of words to describe it. You know, it's it was almost like we hopped back in time a little bit, except, you know, we couldn't watch the TV. We just got to hear it, you know. But, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like. It says they continue doing more third doctor stories. We could see some returns of character we haven't seen even in New Who. You know, like the like like Freedom said, the Draconians, mm. you know, the Ogrons. Yeah, yeah. I, I really but you see that's that's part of the um Peladon and I don't you know, that's I don't I mean I could see him maybe going back one more time, but um 
That's a little weird because in one in one solo he was with Joe, and the second one he was with Sarah Jane. So, I mean, he could go. He could do a solo story because before Sarah Jane he met her, he could have had a couple of solo stories himself. And then, and then, and then the next one, he, he just dumps Adam and see you later, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> next one was yeah, Fifth Doctor, yeah, Perry and Aramem. Yeah, yeah right of Peladon. Yeah, then there was also the Companion Chronicle, uh, Prisoner of Peladon. Oh, Dave Trenton. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so you know, really good set. Like I said, the music, you know, especially for the in the Prisoners of Under the Lake. Oh God, I oops, I slipped in a title for last series. Ah. Uh, under the lake, there we go. Yeah, I just looked at under the lake. No oh, well. prisoners. Yeah. So, okay, let's go ahead. So, anything else anyone want to throw in? Um, one thing I just well, they announced when they're going to release the, uh, the next box set. Yeah, uh, has there been any word on that yet, Graham? It's nothing to the best of my knowledge. Um, you go to some, you'll have some type of announcement before the end of the year. That's a, they make it too much this year, so you make it something next year. All I can say is keep tuned to the Big Finish website. Oh, God, I should get paid. Oh, but um, yeah. I, we're gonna check, Mr. Brett. Yeah. But at the but same time, you know, now they're gonna have stuff where they're going all the way back. You know, not to mention, oh, God, sorry, I flipped my words there. They got new stuff coming in. They got the old stuff still being put out. You know, it's just such a great variety there. You've got stuff from the new show coming in, and it's just amazing stuff. And you have this stuff right here where they take you back in time to that bygone era, you know, where the Doc was trapped on Earth. And then, you know, well, that second story of Havoc Empires, that's after he was forgiven by the Time Lords. But um, either way, both stories really good. I, I just Let's go ahead and let's rate the sucker for I go on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell you what we're going to do. Since we had two stories in the set, and to me, they kind of stood out individually. If you want to, go ahead and, you know, give a rating for each one. And then just, if you want, throw in an overall if you like. Okay, so let's start with Graham. How do you rate this one? All righty. Uh, President, President of the League, I'll give a nine. Really enjoyed it. That season eight feel. Uh, Habit of Empires, what the hell, I'll give you a nine as well. And for the first effort, big finish, well done. 9.5 out of 10 overall bullshit. All right. William. Um, Prisoners of the Lake, I give it an 8. And the and the second story, The Havoc Empire, I give it a 9. Um, together, in, as a boxer, I give it an 8.5. And, and because I know they're going to they're gonna do better. When they release other ones, they're going to be more better stories. Hmm. All right. Ryan? Um, despite the initial... Uh, I guess difficulty I had listening to this being it was my first experience listening to it, uh, have some, um, it describing what's going on. Uh, that was the first time I've heard a big finish like that. Uh, I got used to it pretty quickly, but, um, I go, um, prisoners of the lake. I'd give a seven. Uh, and, um, Mm, the second one I give an eight, uh, and as an overall, uh, I'll give it a nine. All right, AJ. Yeah, I'll give both stories a uh, nine out of ten, and overall a uh, ten out of ten for the box set. Mm. All Please. right, and Texas Tim. I would give the Prisoner of the Lake uh, a nine, and I would give the Havoc of Empires a ten. So that would make my rating for the box a 9.5. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to go the same route as AJ. I'm going to give both stories a 9 and give the box that overall a 10 because they, they did a really great job putting this together. Yes. I, I like the cover art. They did a nice cover art for that box set. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it because they put, you know, Pertwee's face in shade. Mm. So, you know, it's alluding to the character, but at the same time, you know, while it is someone else, hey, it's the same character that, you know, Pertwee brought to life. What I'm loving about this, though, is, you know, even Tim Trelore, when I was talking to him, he said what he did was, sorry, I hate the drop name, um, he actually had a little, a little palm-like player. And if he started to feel like he was losing Pertwee's character, he would walk out of the studio, he'd play some of Pertwee's lines he had kept stored. And that way he could help him recapture it before he went back in the start again. 
You know, it's funny he actually mentioned that in the extras. They would cut the, the mic and he, Nick Briggs would go, all right, listen to your thing. Yeah, A couple of things and away you go. So, so we got to yeah. give big props to the guy, for, especially for having the courage to take this on because this is such a pivotal doctor, you know, to a lot of people. And to step into the, you know, try to step into Pertwee's shoes in a way, it, it must have took a lot of courage to do it, you know, especially with such a well-loved character. And wasn't it just like a serendipitous uh, thing wherever um, he, he actually was working on a Tom Baker story and um, mm. t t Tom Baker and Nick Briggs looked at each other. He sounds a lot like John Pertwee, doesn't he? And it just, yeah. They just kind of said, you know, they went from there with it. <laughs> yeah, they were working on uh, Destination Nerva, I think it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, because he was playing this, like, very arrogant, like, aristoc aristocratic type character. And the way he hit it, it was Tom Baker. He looked over and he goes, he looked over at Nick Briggs. He goes, he sounds just like John. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> play Lord Jack. And that's how... Yeah. And that's how it happened. That's how it came together. Okay, folks. Next week, we're going to take a break from the audios. We're going to, we're going to have a little fun. I yeah. decided, just for our little universe here, Chibnall's not running the show anymore. Moffat's not running the show. You are. And I want you to pick who you think the new companion should be. Male, female, modern, contemporary, past, future. Bruce Jenner. Yeah. <laughs> no, all right. Here's the rules, though. No, no past, no past companions. It has to be somebody brand new. And if you want, go as far as to picking an actor or actress you'd like to see portray the role. And if you want, go with a dream budget. You know, go all the way out there. Um, dream. So the checkbooks. <laughs> the budget's gonna be a dream. <laughs> In your mind, you have a checkbook that is blank, like Graham after a night at the lodge. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so no robot dogs then. No, hey. if you want, like I said, anything wide open. If you want to go with a, an alien or a robotic character, that's open too. All right. Uh, give me a short history. Where do they come from? You know, where do they come from another planet? Did they come from Earth? Did they come from the past? You know, you can go. It's up to you. <laughs> so if you want to go with a machine, say, hey, go for it. This is either going to be very good or very bad. <laughs> So it's just a little fun thing to help fill the time while we're waiting for, you know, Series 10 to come around. Which is their, their Christmas special. Yeah. Which is not going to be out until freaking November. Uh, December, December. Oh, yeah. But we'll all live through it. Come on. Everybody made it to the big hiatus, and they're still alive. So, okay. Well, till next week then. Remember, you pick the companion next week. And I'm really looking forward to hearing people's submissions. So have a good day. Bye, Bye. Alvida Zen.